Hello and welcome to another percussion tutorial. We have something a little different today. We're going to talk about some conga resources. So we're back on congas, but I'm going to talk about some resources that I've collected over the years that are in my library as it pertains to congas. So I have some DVDs, even got a VHS tape, look at that, old school, and some books. And uh, yeah, so let's jump right into it. Um, so yeah, this is a little different. Got my cardigan sweater on, so you know, he, I'm prepared to just kind of show you some of the things that I've collected that have helped me over the years of studying and learning, as well as things that I have recommended for my students. Now, I believe that books and videos are great, and now that you have, you know, we're in the, we're far well within the digital age, we not only have books and videos, but we have the internet. So we have online videos and online resources, and we have YouTube, we have Vimeo, we have Instagram, we have Facebook. There's so many resources and, and ways to learn, whereas 20 years ago, there were things that these um, experiences, exposure that we didn't have. Uh, so there, these things are great, but I also love face-to-face, -face, concerts, clinics, actual lessons, education, having teachers face-to-face, -face, even online. If you have nowadays, like I said, the internet, you have Skype and you used to, some people use Google Chat, but a lot of people use Skype and various other um, online chat, FaceTime, whatever it may be, but still replacing a, an actual teacher from time to time in my opinion is uh, irreplaceable that didn't make any sense grammatically but so it, it, it's still it, it to me the best thing to do is to have a physical teacher but that doesn't mean you cannot someone cannot reach a high level without an actual teacher everyone is different and then what a teacher is, there's different definitions of a teacher. There's feedback, maybe not face-to-face, -face, but someone you send videos to and they correct you. Perhaps you have a system of learning that you have developed over the years. Uh, maybe you're learning as a 20-year-old, 30-year-old, 40-year-old, 50-year-old, as opposed to a 10-year-old. So you have an understanding and a system of learning. So everything is not always the same. It's contextual. Anyways, also your sound library what type of songs do you listen to that's very important and then video so anyways we get back into we'll jump into that so these are books that are mainly concerning the congas i have a library full of resources for different instruments that i play different percussion instruments that i play but i wanted to share with you some conga resources first one all that being said is actually not a conga resource it's actually stick control for the snare drummer. Now, many of you who might play the drum set may already be familiar with this book. Or say you play drum line, you're in a marching band, you may be familiar with this. I love this book for increasing your technical proficiency, rudiments, creating a, a rhythmic, a riff library uh, as it is. And, and also just helping your ability on, on the drums here your ability to navigate around the instrument. I believe that one thing, the rudiments are, are like scale exercises for a pianist. It's just going over and over and over, or arpeggiating or, or vocal exercises. It's, this is our exercise and way to develop the body, the, the hands, the feet, what have you, the hands on the congas. Um, so I often just stay on page five, and I, I recommend this book to my students as well, but I often stay right in the single beat combinations on page five, unless I wanna go into more in depth. But in the beginning, uh, I'm sorry, in the page before, on page four, it actually, if you go through it, it gives you suggested ways and how to practice it. You don't, you don't even have to read music to do these exercises because the hand tablature is right below the music notation. Right, left, right, left, or right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. So you can, it's somewhat intuitive and you can figure it out. But stick control, it's just a really, this is a great resource. This is probably my second, third, or fourth, or whatever copy. So it's a great one to have. If you have some questions about that stick control and going over that and you want to talk more about it, send me a comment or, or go to williamjohnsonmusic.com and shoot me an email and perhaps we can 
uh, have a uh, discussion about some ways to use a stick control. All right, the next book is a little, is a conga book, and it's a little more advanced. But for those that are playing congas and are getting more serious or are, are increasing their development and want to go to another level, this book, I'd almost say it's a must. It's a great book. The amount of information in it is awesome. It's a wealth uh, of information. And that is none other than the Conga Drummer's Guidebook by Michael Spiro. It's a great book. Um, it might be a little overwhelming at first if you're not... Uh, trained in music theory, a certain level of music theory, but it's a great book. It and and again, it does have on various exercises and examples in here. It does have hand notation as well, left, right, as well as conga conga tabs. So B for bass tone, O for open tone, T C for touch, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So also, it comes with a audio CD. So you have the corresponding, excuse me, the corresponding numbers in each example will have uh the, it'll have a corresponding number for the actual cd and you can listen to what that sounds like and there's quite a bit there's several paragraphs throughout the book explaining everything from the the understanding and technical foundation for clave and rumba clave phrasing is in here talking about phrasing and soloing um, uh, building stamina, heel toe or palm finger technique. So this is this is a great book. If you're just getting started, uh, it, it might go over your head a little bit. And when I say just getting started, even in music theory. Um, by the way, you may see this board, and you might see some stuff on here. That's I'm just in between, in between lessons actually, and I'm actually going over some basic music theory and uh, composing contemporary rhythms on congas uh, lesson series that I have up. So the next book, I it's actually a book series, I believe is great for beginners, intermediate, and even advanced, those that are continuing to keep their skills sharp, is the Tomas Cruz Conga Method. Now there's three volumes of this book. This purple cover is the second volume, and it's called Intermediate Essential Cuban Conga Rhythms, but you, you, there's some semantics in play there. It, it is on an intermediate level, but it could be on an advanced level. If you understand and memorize and completely by feel authentic, have every rhythm in this book, I will put that at the advanced level, but also an, an advanced level person is going to be think this way. Let me increase uh, my vocabulary by not just learning a rhythm and not mastering it, but actually learning it and mastering it. So you, you can take that intermediate thing, however, but also it has um, it has music theory in it. So if you're not attuned to that, the great thing about it is it has the conga tab underneath it. And underneath that, it will also say which hand. So, if, for instance, I'm, what I'm pointing to here is a is a O underneath an eighth note, okay? And underneath that O, which that O stands for open tone, is right R. So, right hand plays an open tone, and then it'll have the the note. The eighth note is up on the higher part of the music staff, meaning if this play, and it often say if it's on two or three drums. So if it's on two drums, then this is on the higher pitch drum, right? So you don't even have to have a high level of music theory ability to to play this book. Also, the, one of the awesome things about this series is that it comes. Each one comes with a DVD, and Tomas Cruz is playing note for note slowly middle speed and fast speed of each rhythm in the book and you can just look at what number rhythm that is go to the dvd that'll be on there and then you can play it so you really don't, almost don't even need the book but another genius thing about this book is for each rhythm and each variation of the rhythm there's a paragraph explaining the history behind it some brief history as well as listings of songs essential songs, popular songs that that rhythm was used. And that is an amazing resource to, to digest this information. So the first volume is the basics, basic Afro-Cuban rhythms, bolero, cha-cha, uh, various tumbaos, somantuno, 
and, and salsa on, on, on and so on and so forth. So that's the first volume. This is the second volume, a lot of rumba, sango, Mozambique. And the third vo volume is timba. And that's a, that's a great one as well. So, which, if I may add, there's not, that's a, it's awesome because the, the resources in such a manner, just on timba, um, is, there's not as many. So that, that's a, that might be one you definitely want to add. The next one is a fairly recent one to my library, and it's by a gentleman who often goes by the third hand. He's a Cuban, Cuban percussionist, amazing musician, Inildo Rasua Vallocera, and you can find this one at his website, um, but it's called Tumbadoras Congas, Volume 2. Now, this book also comes with an audio CD. It's, it also ha is, has quite a bit of music notation in it. It is a book, so you're going you're gonna to have some of that. But he has his own music notation for the congas that he's come up with and, and explains in the book. Now, there's some learning curve to figuring out his music notation. But once you figure it out, if you're not afraid to take some time and figure it out, it's quite intuitive. And the fact that it also comes with an audio CD, it's pretty amazing. And, but wait, there's more. There's a whole section in this book that is dedicated just to bata adaptations to the congas. Now, if you're new to congas, the bata drums are the sacred drums from Cuba where a lot of rhythms that we play in contemporary Latin music, Afro-Cuban style, originated from Cuba, are derived from or inspired from bata repertoire. And several years ago, the only way you're going to learn bata music is by listening to recordings, acquiring DVDs and videos, or going to Cuba, or going to New York, or going somewhere with someone who has has a knowledge in bata playing. And even then, you may have to still figure out your own way by mastering those, those rhythms, how you're gonna adapt them to congas. Here you have a gentleman who is a, a master conguero, a master conga player, who has adapted these rhythms to congas. And there's at least, to my knowledge, at least 10 plus more. There might be even more than that. Let's see, we have at least Ogun, Yesa, Tui Tui, Chacha Locafu, Pao Partido Alto, Maracatu, Samba Rural, Chocolatin, Timbanco. So you have several. That's one, two, three, four, five, six right there. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and a variation. So that's twelve just bata rhythms adapted to congas. Then there's a whole six, eight section and several other rhythms. He has a a whole legend, a key in here with syllabic, uh, syllable um, strikes. So, for instance, palm, con, bass, or, or I'm sorry, um, open, king. So I use a lot of, uh, I use drum, my own drum language, but I think that's important too, is to develop a drum language. So he has some of that in here. So this is a, for me, this is a gem. This is a treasure, this book right here. And you can find it at uh, www.tumbadoras.com or inildorasua.com or percusioncubana.com and I'll put all that in the, the notes. So, on to the video. <laughs> 